Okay, hello everybody. Welcome back to um, Everlasting Summer. <clears throat> I'm sick. I don't know why I'm playing this game while I'm sick, but hey, what the hell? At first, I didn't pay attention, as I wasn't fully aware awake yet. On their own, my legs carried me towards the door. Simon, damn, looks like I fell asleep and missed my stop. Does that? Sam, Samyon, Samyon. But there was no door. I looked around the bus and realized that it wasn't a good old worn out Leia's instead of a. Wait. Wasn't a good one. Instead, the bus was an Icarus model, a new one. I froze in shock. How? What? Am I dead? Have I been kidnapped? No. I must be dead. Patted myself down, feverishly, slapped myself pain, painfully in the face a few times, banged my forehead on the back of one of the bus's seat. It's clear, either I'm still alive or you can still feel pain when you're dead. But how could this happen? Maybe I slept for too long and ended up at a, the bus depot. And then, what did the mountains? I rushed out and looked around. Greenery wherever I looked, tall grass on the roadside, trees, flowers, summer. But how? It was winter just a mo- Ugh, Jesus, I'm so sorry. Blah. It was winter just a moment ago. My head was aching unbearably, as if it was going to explode. Slowly I began to remember. Eyeball. <laughs> a long road running into, off into the distance, forest, plains, fields, lake, and forest again. I think I was sleeping, but then, how can I remember all of it? And then, a gap. Some girl leaning over me. She softly whispered something into my ear. Then a gap again. And then I woke up here. Who was that strange girl? Or was she just a dream? For some reason, thinking about her made me feel better. It calmed me down a little. I felt warmth all over, coming from the inside. Could it be her who brought me here? Then I need to find her. And the best place to look for her is away from here. I rushed to the left, then to the right, and stopped, hesitating, hesitating over where I were to go. Finally, I ran in the direction from which the bus had probably came. <laughs> Physical exercise doesn't does refresh one's minds. Thoughts become clear, and it gets a little easier to evaluate the surrounding reality. Not in my case, however. I was sitting on the roadside, wheezing and trying to ease my sore throat by gulping breaths of hot air. <laughs> in any case, the run did its job. The fear with the Jew for a while. Maybe I really am just dreaming. So, reclaiming, recalling myself harm on the bus. I immediately rejected the idea. Oh, is this my name? I am neither dreaming nor dead. Son of a bitch. Okay. A narrow road ran through the field and far into the distance. I thought the game crashed. <clears throat> the exact same road from my dream. Must be very, very far from home. And it's not just that. It was winter yesterday and it's summer now. It's the whole environment. Of course, summer is usually like this green and hot, but here everything is not entirely lifelike. Everything looks like it was taken from the paintings of Russian landscape artists of the 19th century. <laughs> the grass is just too lush. The bushes are not like what bushes should be. They are so thick that you can't see through them, anything through them. Like treetops, honestly. 
the trees themselves. The forest was quite far away, but the trees looked as if they had cl closed their ranks and were now just waiting for other, for the order to advance into the fields and plains. <laughs> Caught my breath and looked at the bus, which was now barely, barely visible. That was a good run. Forever took me once again. Those power lines. There must be people here. What does it mean? In fact, that means nothing at all. Couldn't they have power lines even in hell? Roasting sinews over hot coals. That's so last century. It must have reached the point of no return. After which you should either lose your mind completely or finally try to understand what is going on. And while I still have a choice, I should pick the second option. Slowly headed back to the bus. Of course it was scary. But I'm not likely to find the answer in the fields or the woods. And this wretched bucket of bolts is the only kind of link that I have with... Shit. Uh, with the real world. <coughs> I should carefully scout the area. Don't know what they'll say because I don't read German. I mean, not German, um... Fucking hell, whatever the hell. Russian, I don't read Russian. Solvi ok on... Solvi on ok meets all A brick wall and its gates crowned with the Solvi ok sign. Solvi on ok sign. Statues of pioneers standing on either side and a road sign, sign nearly showing the bus route number 410. The trip's taking a bit too long today. I smirked. These people may start acting inappropriately in extreme situations. In extreme situations. Something like that is probably happening to me now. This place didn't look out abandoned at all. No rust on the gates, no damage on the walls. Sovio. Sovi Onok. What could have a name like that? Judging by the pioneer statues, it could be a kid's summer camp. Moreover, it appears to be open. Of course, simplest explanation, logically speaking, explains nothing at all. The strange girl, the altered bus, summer, the pioneer camp. Thousands of theories went through my mind instantly, from alien abduction to lethargic sleeping from a hallucination to a time and space shift none was worse than any other but there was really no way to pick a single one then it occurred to me i can try to make a phone call I took out my phone and dialed the first number from my contacts list but instead the signal strength bars the screen was showing a thick cross all right there may be no signal in such a remote place, though I cannot be the only one who came here. Buses don't drive themselves. I examined the bus from all sides and made sure it wasn't a hallucination. Bits of dirt on the bottom, some rust here and there, faded paint and worn out tires. No, it's definitely a very ordinary I Icarus. Yeah, exactly the kind of bus which takes you to places beyond your understanding if you carelessly fall asleep gave a nervous chuckle it came out by itself sporadically because this wasn't the right place or time to laugh but where on earth is the driver cautiously sat down on the curb beside the bus and started to wait my patience didn't last long my anxiety seemed to have reached its peak. I started to go slightly mad. In such a situation, anyone would have probably felt something similar. Aliens and parallel universes are gone from my imagination, leaving only voids and darkness. Is this how everything will end? How my life will end? But I wanted to do so much. There were so many things I had no time for yet. I was overwhelmed by the idea. This was definitely the end. But why? It's not fair. Surely I'm no worse than anyone else. 
Tears were burning my eyes unbearably. I curled up and started rolling in the grass. Why? What did I do? Why me? My cries were only heard by speechless statues of pioneers and a bird in a tree, which immediately flapped its wings and took off, crying out something in its own bird language as if Link, laughing at the idiot who dared to interrupt its after dinner nap. I was left breathless from weeping and just to lie quietly, sobbing occasionally. After a while, I managed to pull myself together. My mind cleared up a bit, as if terror and the fear of death gave me a little break. All in all, if someone wanted to kill me, was what is all this for? It doesn't look like an experiment to me. If this is just some crazy coincidence, then there's probably no threat. Anyway, now it seems there's no danger. Panic was soon gone. Of course, the blood was still pounding in my temples, and my hands were still shaking, but at last, I could think clearly now. Right now, there's nothing I can really change anyways. So no matter how much I think or how mad I get, it would only make things worse. Until so some actual facts appeared, there's really no point in making guesses. In any case, I won't learn anything by lodging around here. This camp, if of course it is really a camp, looked like the only place where people can be, so I decided to go there. And hardly had I reached the gate when a girl came out from behind me, wearing a pioneer uniform. <laughs> My logic didn't let me down this time. Then again, a pioneer uniform in the 20th, 21st century. And then again, a girl here, frozen, able to take a step. I felt very much like running away, running as far away as I could from this place, far from this bus, gates, statues, and far from this bloody bird with its sister. Just running free like the wind, faster and faster, waving to the planets passing by. Winking at the galaxies, running, becoming a pulsar, ray, and turning into vestigial radiation, running to face the unknown, run no matter where, as long as it is uh, from this place. Meanwhile, the girl came closer and smiled, could not help but notice her beauty. Even though I was trembling with fear, human instincts were independent of consciousness. And while only 5% of the brain is responsive for the cognitive process, the remaining 75% are always busy sustaining life, and in particular, ensuring stable functioning of the hormonal system. Desperately wanted to get less complicated, stop thinking in formal quotes from an encyclopedia, though. My thoughts appeared, one by one, being stupid, out of place, as if taken from an internal monologue of the hero of some junky, soft-cover crime fiction book. Pretty Slavic face, long braids, and... Wait, hold up. Pretty Slavic face, long braids that looked like two armfuls of fresh hay, and blue eyes you can drown in. Hi. What up, fuck. I can't do a girl's voice, but I want to try. Uh, hi, 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 hi. Hello, hi. You have, yeah, that's good enough. Hi, you, you must have just arrived. That's really hard to do. Reply, let's reply. Um, yeah, wait, um, yeah. All right then, welcome. She smiled broadly. Stranger looked as if I had just a normal girl in front of me. Bah! Shouldn't have returned here. The woods and Phil seemed better. But what shall I do next? Try to speak with her as if she was a human or run away? Or what? I should have paused a little bit between there, but oh well. The blood was pumping unbearably in my head, tearing it apart from the inside. 
little bit more and the poor girl pioneer but the poor pioneer girl would be splattered with the gruesome contents of my skull jesus christ what's what's so funny about that the girl looked me over it sent shivers down my spine and my knees started to tremble N nothing great great then great what's so great about that Suddenly a, th suddenly a thought crossed my mind. To hell with it all. I got with a bus behind me with the fact that it was winter yesterday and summer today. I wanted to rip off my itchy sweater and just accept that all this is actually happening. Everything is as it should be. All this is for the best. Would you happen to know? You should go to our camp leader. She'll tell you everything. Look. Ugh, ugh, Jesus Christ. Ugh. You... <laughs> you go straight ahead to the square, then turn left. You'll see several small cabins. She pointed, she pointed at the gate as if I knew what was behind them. What up? Demeterv is a patronomic... A demeterv of a person... Father's name, in this case, Dimitri, put by Russians after the person's first name as a sign of respect or formal address. Okay, that makes sense, I think. Well, you can ask someone where Olga Dimitriyevna's cabin is. Oh god, these Russian names. I'm not going to be able to pronounce any of this. I'm going to butcher everything. I, um... Got it? Of course I didn't. Well, I've got to go now. The girl waved her hand at me and disappeared through the gates. It seemed as if to her I was something... Or ordinary. And all this... Show with the bus and the travels while awake or asleep... I'm troubling only to me. Well, everything here is just the way it's supposed to be. Camp leader, pioneer uniform. What are they doing? A historical reenactment here? What are, what are they doing? A historical reenactment? I hope I won't find a linen standing atop an armored car in this square. But even that would not surprise me right now. After standing alone for a while, I headed into the camp. A mere 50 meters ahead, a small one-story house popped up on the left. The sign near the door said, Clubs. I was about to come closer. When the door suddenly opened and a short girl wearing a pioneer uniform came out. Her pretty face gave me the impression of one suffering from the fate of the whole of mankind with a truly universal sorrow. As soon as she saw me, the girl froze as if frightened. I froze too, considering what was the best to do. Considering what was the best to do? To approach first or wait until she showed some initiative. Or maybe run away after all. Although this last option was constantly being suggested only by my self preservation instinct. At least that's what I like to believe. Not the worst human instinct, but far from the most logical. If this instinct played poker against deductive abilities, the outcome would be predetermined mind. Predetermined. 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 I'm a fucking idiot. And those deductive abilities were at least their symbolance. Symbolance were hinting to me that there were no need to be afraid of this girl. Oh my God, there's another girl. Suddenly someone jumped out of nearby bushes, a girl wearing a bright red t-shirt with USSR written on it. Oh, is that what that's supposed to be? It's such a perfect reproductive, or such a perfect reproduction of that, of the age. <laughs> she looked quite short from the distance, and was probably younger than both pioneer girls. The one at the gates and this girl at the door with the clubs. At least I decided to come closer, but the USSR, as I called her in my mind, jumped towards the first girl and started telling her something, while 
wildly waving her arms. Okay, guys, um, my recording stopped. So this is about where we were last left off. Where's the last thing I read? Okay, this is the last thing I read. At last, I decided to come closer, but the USSR girl... USSR, as I called her in my mind, jumped towards the first girl and started telling her something while wildly waving her arms. The other girl in turn seemed confused and lowered her gaze and remained silent. Alright, and now we're here. I would have probably continued to observe their amusing dialogue, but the USSR suddenly pulled something out of her pocket and started waving it in front of the first girl's face. That something turned out to be a grasshopper. <laughs> That's my girliest scream I could do. Oh god. The first girl squealed. She must not be too keen on insects, as she instinctively rushed off towards the place where Len presumably made a speech about the workers and pestilence revolution. This is to say, towards the square. The USSR glanced at me, grinned happy, playfully, and dashed after her. Not a bad start to the day. I have absolutely no clue where I am. Besides that, there are some kids here role-playing as pioneers. And as far as I can tell, this place is located thousands of kilometers away from my house. It might even be a different reality. This was an indeed reality. I mean, everything about it, me seemed so real. A little blenishment, blenished. That I was starting to think that, in fact, my previous life could have began just a dream. Could have been just a dream. But what am I supposed to do now? Do what that one chick told you to do. I was picking at the cracked paving stones with my shoe and starting, staying aimlessly at the club's building. Just a few more seconds before I've come up with, the, with some decisions. <clears throat> That's when I recalled myself rolling in the grass, weeping. I cringed in disgust. Perhaps it's another inst instinct when all energy of for whimpering and self pity is used up. The body that goes into hibernation or mobilizes its reserves. Mine seemed to have chosen the second option, because out of the blue I found the determination to figure out what was going on. And in order to do that, I had to act like a man, like a human, to maintain the dignity of a representative of my own world. I followed the path to the left on the right side, which stood small cabins, apparently the homes of the local pioneers. Actually, they looked quite cozy from the outside, even though I was born in the Soviet Union. I've never been part of its children's organiz organizations, neither the pioneer nor even the younger October children. I imagined in the daily life of a typical pioneer camp a, different, a bit differently. Huge barracks with long rows of metal bunks, wake-ups call at six o'clock played by a siren, one minute to make your bed, then jogging with the formation at the drill square, or wait. Could I be confused yet with something else? Suddenly someone struck me in the back. I staggered but remained on my feet, turned around and prepared to fight heroically for my life. But all I found was another girl standing before me. My mouth hung open in surprise. This this seems like kind of like um I don't know, one of those chicks that are like pissed off all the time or some shit. Um Pick, 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 pick up me. <laughs> That'd be funny if I did that the whole fucking, the whole time. Pick up. Pick, pick, pick up. Pick, 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 pick. Pick up. Pick up, pick up your jaw off. Pick up your jaw up off the ground. You motherfucker. Oh, fuck. Pick your jaw up off the ground. I closed my mouth. The same pioneer uniform, but the way she was wearing it looked, let's say, <laughs> prerogative. 
<laughs> like all the girls I met here before, this one was rather cute. Cute, cute. Why, why did I say cute like that? But her overly angry and expressions killed any <laughs> desire to get to know her better. New here, are you? <laughs> Fine. See ya. Oh, okay. She threw a threatening glance at me and walked past. I waited for the pioneer girl to turn at the corner. Who knows what else she might have been up to. The most interesting thing was that even this hostile girl seemed completely normal to me. I did not give off this, the feeling of some deeply danger, deadly danger. Except maybe the danger of getting punched in the nose. <coughs> at last I managed to make it to the square. There was no linen on an armored car, although one could easily expect something like that. After all this ha had happened, instead, however, a monument to a certain command comrade uh, towered in the middle of the square. The letters on the pedestal read, Kienda, Kienda. Must be some big figure in the party. There were small benches at the sides. It's quite pleasant here. Where did that girl tell me to go? To the left or to the right? To the left, to the right, to the left, to the right. And why am I going there anyways? Alright, I've decided to pretend to be normal. So to the right. All th through a small groove. Came out at the pier. Must have taken a wrong turn. Hey. Hey, wrong way! I turned towards the voice. Oh, wow. The, f <laughs> the first girl stood before me. Now, what did I tell you? Take a left at the square, wasn't it? She had changed from her pioneer uniform into a bikini. Oh, I still haven't introduced. Oh, I still haven't introduced myself. My name is Salavia. Salavia. Yes, yeah, Salavia. Actually, my full name's Salaviana, but everyone calls me Slavia. Sla Slavi. I hope that's right, because if not, I'm I'm gonna be very very sad about myself. <laughs> So you can too. Um, um, yeah. I still felt a bit confused, so could not come up with the more meaningful answers. And what's your name? I felt like she could see right through me. Um, I, yeah, Semyon. Nice to meet you, Semyon. All right, I'm almost done here. Could you wait here a minute? I'm going to change and we'll go to... Olag Dementrievana Together. Agreed? Um, agreed. After this exchange, she ran off. I sat on the pier and let my feet hang into the water. I was wearing heavy winter boots, but in such weather, there was nothing wrong in getting my feet wet. Furthermore, I let my... I let cool myself a little further. Looking at the weather, I was brainstorming and processing everything that had happened. If this is some kind of conspiracy, it'd be a weird one. Even too friendly at times. No, it really looks like... It really looks more like a random event. Some entirely incomprehensible random event. Shall we go? Sh shall we go? <laughs> and this is where I'm going to end the episode. So, um, I hope you guys, um, enjoyed it. Hope you comment, rate, subscribe, do all that cool stuff. And I will see you in the next video. Peace.